welcome back to my channel. It's been so long, I'm so sorry. I kind of just disappeared for a few weeks mentally. I haven't been in a good headspace with YouTube. I'm absolutely fine, but I've just really struggled to pick up a camera. Um, maybe we'll go into it in this video or maybe the next one. But thank you so much if you click on this video. This is my annual end of year review and goals video. I do these every single year. Uh, this is the fifth one. If watching my vlog seems like such a daunting thing, like <laughs> there's so many videos to catch up on, the end of year review ones are really good because they'll give you an overview of what's happened in that year. So look out for these videos. I've put them in a playlist so it's easy to find them. This is the fifth year of doing it. How it works is I film a video I then, a year later, react to the things I said in that video, the goals I set myself. I tell you if I hit them, if I didn't. Then we're gonna do like an overview of what has gone well this year. And then I'm gonna set goals for next year. And then you can hopefully subscribe and watch next year when I react to that video. Every year is different. Some years I hit all my goals. I think last year I didn't hit any goals. <laughs> so this one is gonna be interesting. I know, I don't remember what I set myself, but I do know that this situation that I'm in now is not what I thought was gonna happen. So I'm not, I have no idea. I have no idea. We're gonna watch them together. So get cozy, get all wrapped up. I hope you had a lovely Christmas, by the way. Get all wrapped up. Let's watch this together and see, see how we did. So I have my laptop down here because I feel like this is gonna be a better angle for you to see. I have the video all lined up. I'm gonna pop it on the screen now. Hopefully you can see. So let's go. So let's get into some goals for next year. I don't think I've gone crazy at all because there's a lot of change happening next year for me. My little boy Luca, who has been with me since I started this channel, uh, he starts school in 2023. Can you believe it? My little boy is starting school and that will change work for me massively because my... <laughs> It definitely did change work massively, didn't it? This is obviously like late December I'm filming this. I had nine months to prepare for Luca to start school. <laughs> she had no idea what was coming. <laughs> Goals for this business was to have it so that I can take him to school and pick him up every day. And it will alter the way I have to work. I might be able to work more. It might be that I have to work less. I don't know right now. So I'm not cramming the diary with loads to do because my priority is spending my last year with him. I'm gonna travel with him and take him places. And then in September, obviously he'll start school. So this is gonna be the year that I not slow down, not step back, not none of that. But I, I've been going at 100 miles an hour for three years. It's the year of just calm. I, yeah. I remember my word of last year was calm. Has this year been calm? I think it has actually. I, I would say I did what I intended. I slowed down a little. I will go into like some of the things I did for that, but I think, yeah, I think it was a year of calm. And like I said, I wanted to travel with Luca um, and see and do and see things. And we definitely, definitely did that. Um, it's not about setting crazy goals and doing all these crazy things. I want to stay in business <laughs> next year, but I also want to enjoy life next year and I'm gonna find that balance next year. So hopefully, Emily, when you're watching this at the end of 2023, going into 2024, hopefully you found that balance. Hopefully you feel calm. Hopefully anxiety has lowered. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> so this is just a reminder. You can do all the things, you can slow down, you can do all the stuff. But if anxiety is something you struggle with, um, it's not just going to disappear. <laughs> uh, I haven't filmed on here for weeks because of worry and fear and anxiety. <laughs> I do feel calmer. I feel the most content in my life and my family's happiness and all of that stuff. I am no better in terms of my worries, my anxieties, my overthinking has not improved at all, unfortunately. <laughs> right now, as, as, as I'm recording this, I wouldn't say I'm stressed out to the max because I'm really not, but I, I'm not sleeping great. I'm sleepwalking a lot. When I sleepwalk, it's because I've got anxiety. I've got things on my mind. I'm, I've got a lot of broken sleep um, and I want to remove that next year. So next year is the year of calm and finding balance and enjoying life. And the top thing on there, which is the most important for me, is I would like to be a healthier person next year. I'm actually a quite an active person. I love 
being active and doing things and this year I've had a few issues I've said it on the vlogs before I've got a bad back I've got a neck problem and all of this has kind of stopped my activeness <laughs> and it probably didn't need so I haven't really spoken about this but at this point last year I was in a lot of pain I was on pain meds every single day it did it had stopped my exercise and I didn't feel healthy this year it was all about trying to solve the problem I if you follow me on Instagram you'll know that I had many hospital visits I've had several MRIs CT scans I've had brain scans I've had all the things and um, they can't seem to find the root of the problem now that is good because it just it means there's nothing scary happening in my head but um the downside to that is I'm still suffering I have good and bad days back then every day was bad now I have good and bad days so today's a good day I feel great um two days ago I had I was really bad so it's getting better in that I'm not suffering every day but it is not it's I'm no better if that makes sense in terms of being a healthier person I now that I'm starting to feel better I'm able to move more which is good so like I did a gym session yesterday and burnt 900 calories I was absolutely exhausted um so I'm getting back to it I'm not where I want to be but um I'm hoping as I build up my fitness levels my neck my headaches all that issues will hopefully disappear I feel like I stopped exercising because I was getting really bad headaches but I think I was getting really bad headaches because I was stopped exercising it was just like this vicious cycle so I would say I'm getting better I'm really enjoying getting back into fitness I feel better sleep hasn't improved I was still sleepwalking not last night the night before it's just one of those things I think I just that's what I have Luca does it as well Luca sleepwalks as well so I would say I don't, I don't know if I hit that goal because I don't know what the like I don't know what the the goal was really I just wanted to be a health per healthier person I'm on the road to that still have a long way to go and what I found is if I'm not active and if I'm not healthy it affects everything I don't feel as motivated in here I don't sleep right so top of my list is to get healthier and more active so you might think um that's not business related but it is because if I'm not healthy I can't do this properly and I want to do this for the rest of my life and I can't if I'm not looking after myself. I will be ramping up my activeness, getting out more, not just sitting at a desk all day longer than going home and sitting in front of the telly. Like I, I need to be doing that. But hopefully you see it in me that I am more active. I don't think you will have seen it in me. Maybe you do. Um, but even just taking Luca to school every day, walking there and back every single day, has mentally put me in a better place. Before, when Luca was at home with me, we could just stay in PJs, which I, honestly, there's nothing wrong with doing that. But having, forcing myself to get up, get out, get fresh air is the first thing I do every day, has mentally really, really, really helped. So this is just for you. If you sit at your desk all day long and you're feeling a bit groggy and you feel unmotivated, I've really seen the benefit of getting fresh air. And I know that sounds like the last thing you want to be doing when you wake up but I really have got into audiobooks I used to buy books but I would never read them and they just pile up but I found that by um listening to books I'm like excited to get outside and pop it on or if I'm driving anywhere I listen to audiobooks make that a little habit if you can in 2024 if you sit in all day and you're able to get outside it'll do the world a good i promise hopefully by the time you're watching this next year you see that i i look and feel in a better place mentally and physically <laughs> i don't look any different but mentally i feel healthier <laughs> okay on to actual business things i've wrote down that i want to do two kickstarters in 2023 i've been doing one every single year um and I have a plan to do a Kickstarter, which I've talked about on Patreon and things, for a product that I've never done before. It's completely different and it will take a lot of planning and a, a big budget. Um, I'm definitely gonna- So, the plan for this year was to do two Kickstarters. I did one and that's only because the product I'm talking about and what I really wanted to do was I really wanted to make a cushion. Now, I wanted a cushion for like the office, the studio, and for you to have in your home, home office or wherever, 
to just be like a thing that we all had, like a nice little thing in the studios, our offices that we all had. Um, and it would be a gorgeous lilac motivating little pillow cushion. I'd found like the manufacturer, I'd done all the things. And the goal was like later on in the year, September time, I would launch that and it would be a really big Kickstarter. Moving home and having to give up the studio meant I couldn't do that project anymore because I've no room to house a lot of cushions. So I was really sad to let that go and I hope one day I will be able to do that. But yeah, the, the project I'm talking about there is my cushion project that I had dreamt up. I do that this year, but it will be later in the year that. So maybe second half, maybe in the summer, that's when we'll do that. I'd really like to do another pin uh, Kickstarter, but I really want to do a mini pin collection. So like little tiny pins that can like fill up your pin boards. Um, I'm doing it because I really need some. <laughs> to, like, I have gaps all over my pin board and I know exactly the pins I want to do. So why not do a Kickstarter for them? That happened. I'm so excited. I don't know at what point I was, I probably designed them at this point. Maybe I'll talk about that in a minute. I did my Brave and Strong Carousel Horse Kickstarter in February of this year and the stretch goals were the mini pins and they were all funded. I absolutely adore them. They have done well in the shop this year. My initial goal is what, that I would sell them as sets and um, sadly that hasn't been successful. Um, it's all down to me and the promoting of it. I could have done them like a really good job of selling them as like pin starter sets and I didn't. Um, so they are all in the shop. I'm really proud of the Kickstarter. It went very, very, very well. And yeah, I love them. As you would expect from me, lilacs, golds, uh, very magical inspired, but really small little pins in sets of maybe four. So maybe we'll do like, one set of four and then the stretch goals would be another set of four i don't know that would be a smaller kickstarter it would help me massively because i need to restock a lot of pins and i thought if i'm going to do a big restock of pins i might as well get some new ones in as well so the plan is to do two kickstarters one at the start of the year and one in the summer later on in the year for christmas time we'll see so next up is events i said i want to do three events next year uh, I don't know what that means. I don't know if that means markets. I don't know if that means speaking events. I just want to get out to three. Three events. So I did, uh, I did do that. Yeah, I did Stationery Fest, uh, which was amazing. I did the Magical Market again, which was incredible. I then did some planner events. So yeah, I hit my three event goal. I did apply for many, many more, but I got turned down for a lot this year, which was disheartening, but it's fine. You just got to keep going, keep pushing. But I did, I hit the goal. I hit, I went to all three things <laughs> and be not just visit, but like be part of those events. Oh, okay. Well, I suppose Stationery Fest and Magical Market, I was part of those events because I sold at those events. I haven't been asked to like speak at events and I don't know how I would feel speaking at events. Um, I would love to be asked one day, but no, not this year. I did Magical Market this year, loved it. I'm hoping to do that again. So two others on top of that. So follow me on my studio vlogs. We'll figure that out where those events are gonna be. But hopefully by the time you're watching this at the end of the year, I've done maybe more than three. Next up is Patreon. I've talked about Patreon and how it's going down. I wanted to get to 500, that's not possible. I, it's, it, I almost don't want to put a number on it, but I have realized that I'm going to put a lot of time and effort into Patreon next year. And if I can get it to 400 people, that would be incredible. I have definitely stepped away from, not stepped away from Patreon because I do a lot of content on Patreon and I do it every month. But I used to post there the behind the scenes all the time and like ideas that I was having. I kind of stopped with that in the second half of the year just for various reasons, but I've decided that needs to come back. I need to, if I've got an idea, I want to share it with my patrons and get their feedback and like this Kickstarter idea, right? I need to put it on Patreon, see what people think and get feedback. And my mind's been distracted in the in the second half of this year with a few things that have go been going on personally. It'll be clear in the new year why I've been so distracted, but. So firstly, Patreon. Patreon is still the best, most wonderful part of this business. It grew insanely fast. It 
for the small little artist that I was, it grew at an insane rate. And um, it was because in COVID, people were forced to leave jobs, working at home and deciding to start their own businesses. And here I was showing you how to do it. Every month I was doing videos and doing all these tutorials and it was such a low price point that I wasn't asking you to part with thousands of pounds. Um, this was a couple of pound a month and it was just, it grew very, very quickly in COVID with people that wanted to start their own business. And I know for a fact that's what happened. So that when the world opened up again and people went back to work and online businesses started to struggle, <laughs> People thought, oh, screw this, I'm going back to work. And the first thing you do is get rid of the, the little tutorials that are helping you with the business. So a lot of people left Patreon and for a while I really struggled with it. I thought I must be doing something wrong. But now I've realised that what I offer over there is pretty incredible. It's really hard to, it's really hard to like talk about yourself, but we've built up such um, a catalogue of content there that anyone that wants to start a small business doesn't need to part with thousands on a course with somebody. They just need to pay a couple of quid a month and they've got access to videos and like literally there's so much content there. At that point, I don't know where I was at. I actually think I haven't grown at all on Patreon this year. I've had a lot of people join. I've had a lot of people leave. I think I'm ending the year with the same amount of people that I had at the end of 2022. In a way it's disheartening because there's potential there for me to really grow it and there's so many people that would benefit from it. It's just really hard to get it out there, <laughs> especially when you're not filming YouTube videos like I'm not. But I'm ending the year with about 330 patrons, which is incredible. I obviously would love to hit 400 again. I was at 400 once. I would love to hit it again. It's just the problem with the the problem with Patreon now is it's just really unpredictable. So some months are incredible. They're really great. But then the next month people cancel and leave. And it is one of the reasons, it's probably the main reason I left my studio is because I just couldn't rely on it. I would love to get it to a more constant because it's at the minute it's like this. I absolutely love Patreon. I The content on there this year has been fab and I definitely did what I set out and I made Patreon a priority this year. I went back to sharing behind the scenes and doing exclusive things and all of that stuff. It's just been amazing. And the like eHearts markets that we do this year, I mean, we've done so many of them now, but this year, this Christmas one we just did was out of this world and it made me realise that we've got something truly special there. So yeah, Patreon is here to stay. I absolutely love it. I'm very excited for next year. I'll tell you some things that we're doing next year on Patreon. But um, yeah, sadly, I didn't hit my goal of growing it again, um, but I did hit my goal of being more present there. I truly believe it's the most magical part of my of my business. I put 400 patrons, but it doesn't matter if it's not 400. I just, I hope by the end of 2023, I feel like I've made a really special place. I think I have, but um, it's hard when it's not growing and it's it's going down, you just doubt everything you're doing. So I'm hoping that it like levels off, um, if not grow, is growing a little bit. So yeah, that I, I definitely feel like we've made a special place and it has leveled off. I have the same amount of people as I did last year. So it's not gone down. If it, if it had gone down even more, I would really be worried, panicking. <laughs> um, so no, it's fine. We'll see. Okay, next on my list, I've said three more pop-up shops. I think this is where I want my future to be is in pop-up shops. I absolutely love it. It's kind of, it's similar to wholesale, but not, it's not the stress of like people buying stock off you. It's me that's in, still keeps control of the stock and I have to just add it to the shop. Um, I'm in Sheffield right now with curated makers and it's going incredibly well. And I've asked them if I can be. <sighs> Sadly, I'm not in any pop-up shops at the minute. <laughs> I, at the time of filming, I was in Sheffield um, I was in Sheffield for a couple more months and then it, I think it was like March, April time they 
they said basically it was my time was up. I don't understand what happened there. Um, and I was really sad about it. Um, it wasn't like my products weren't selling. I was making like decent amount of money. Um, so that was really sad, a bit disheartening. Um, and it, it, I wouldn't say it put me off pop-up shops, but it, chatting to people, it made me realise that um, they pop-up shops do take a massive chunk of your sales. And um, but then the the flip side of that is I wouldn't have made those sales without them. So it, it is it's a hard one. I would love to be in more shops and um, we'll chat about that for my goals for next year. But right now, sadly, I didn't hit that goal. I'm not in any shops, pop up shops or anything. Hopefully I'm in three more pop up shops next year. Um, and that would be a lovely little side income as well to just keep those fully stocked um, of pins. That uh, would be absolutely incredible, actually. <laughs> Okay, I'm setting some more numbers and I, carrying on from last year, I would really love to keep my sales trackers going. I really do love tracking them. Last year, I wanted to average 50 sales a month and I did more than that. This time, I'm gonna average 150 sales a month. That might seem crazy to some people, but you have to just keep growing and I need business to keep growing. 150 sales on average and that's across everything so that would be over my pop-up shops uh, my Etsy my website my digital downloads so 150 sales when you spread it over loads that was a big goal when I set it I was pretty scared about it I felt silly saying it but I haven't done a um, count up in the past week but I haven't had many sales in the past week however I did do like an end of year um, post on Instagram and I put on there that I'd done 1,553 shop sales now divide that over the 12 months that's about 130 and I am insanely proud of that 130 sales a month like I just that's dream numbers for me. And um, that includes events, that includes um, like digital downloads and just all of that stuff is included with that, with that number. So it's not quite 150, but 130 is pretty good. And if you were to add on my legging sales, which I haven't added on in that number, as that feels separate, I 1000% have smashed it. So I'm very happy, very, very, very happy with that. Any money that comes in through the shop gets pumped back into the shop. So, um, you know, making new products and all of that stuff is only possible with shop sales. Um, so, yeah, I'm absolutely thrilled with that. But, yeah, I don't want anyone to be discouraged when they hear my numbers. Like, if your sales goal is five a month, you celebrate that, you go for it. Because I remember when mine was five a month, <laughs> not that long ago. So, just whatever your number is, be proud of that number. Don't feel ashamed or, like, you don't want to share it. We have to share it. That's the whole point of That is another thing I kind of want to talk about. I struggle to share things like sales goals and things. And it's because I don't want people watching to feel discouraged about their numbers but I'm hoping if you've watched me since the beginning and you remember the days where you know the five sale months were a thing I'm hoping you see it as an inspiration um because there's people I look up to that are making a thousand sales a month you know like there's always something you um you want to aim towards so don't be discouraged about whatever your number is like be proud of that number because in a few years it'll keep growing and growing and um, you'll be happy you shared it. Like, don't be put off sharing your numbers out of fear of what people will think. It's inspiring. It's always inspiring. This is to celebrate where we are and to just keep aiming for those bigger numbers. Um, and that's why I'm going for 150, fingers crossed. And then the final thing that I have put on my goals list for this year is to launch my mentoring program. I really want to offer a mentoring like one-to-one -one program um just with a couple of people every month maybe every couple of months um i did it as a test run this year with somebody um and did it as a freebie and it was incredible and i know that they really enjoyed it i get updates from them now saying how 
uh, I achieved this goal and I'm so happy to say that I have mentored quite a few people now. They're just one-off mentoring sessions. They're not like ongoing things. But yeah, I've sat down and chatted with quite a few people and helped them kind of, we chat about all sorts, but just kind of focusing what where they should be spending their their time and what they should be focusing on. And um, the feedback has been incredible and I get so much from it too. So um, yeah, if anyone is interested in, in a mentoring session with me, leave, leave a comment below and I will get in touch. But yeah, it's something I'm so glad I did this year. Like it's been brilliant valuable it was and I felt really good afterwards and I really felt like I can do this I can help people it's another like I say it's another income stream for me as I'm really trying to spread out and not rely so much on patreon and oh my gosh there we go we have tried through all of my goals from last year I hit a few of them I didn't hit some others <laughs> but that's usually what happens every single year anyway um so I'm really glad we did that but I have some highlights of the year that weren't in my goals that I want to talk about. So let's get into it. So I've put together a little list of my highlights from this year that weren't necessarily part of my goals. The first one is I got married at the start of this year. So I said then in the goal section that on Patreon I was a bit distracted and I was just like in my personal life I was distracted. And that was because I was planning a wedding in secret. So I got married in January uh, just like literally a week after I filmed that video um so no wonder I was a bit distracted <laughs> but I got married in New York in January it was a complete secret me and my husband um got married in Central Park it was just everything you dream of really I, I it was just a dream come true and it was one of the reasons I was quite distracted in the second half of that year because I was trying to plan it and not tell anybody and like make sure everything worked out but it did it all worked out wonderfully and that of all the things last year that was a massive massive highlight the legging collection that I worked on with Locket Loves I didn't really talk about much in that goals section but it launched like the month before that video it's now fully sold out it was a brilliant project I loved working on it we sold nearly 2,000 pairs of leggings and my dream is to one day hopefully see them out in the wild <laughs> but I loved working on that it was a huge highlight I'm hoping to maybe do something with them again one day if that if they'll ever allow me to do that but it was amazing another collaboration that I worked on this year was my candle collaboration this was with Gemma from Birdsy Belazaire and I documented this. It was quite recent because it was a Christmas collaboration. We've worked on it since the summer. It was a joy, like another massive highlight of this year. We worked so hard on it. I traveled to Norwich twice. Um, we picked the scents. I did all the illustrations. Um, the candle sold out in 11 minutes. It was just the most magical project. I, ju I just can't tell you how to do something with somebody that means so much to you, a friend, where we both were so passionate about it, wanted it to work and everyone else wanted it to work for us. Like it was just magic and I absolutely adored it. The only downside is I didn't buy myself a set of candles, so I don't have any, um, but I hope you love them. I hope you've enjoyed them over Christmas and we're definitely gonna do something else together. We haven't talked about it yet, but we're definitely, definitely gonna work on something together again because it was absolute joy. Another thing I haven't really talked about, a huge highlight of this year, was that I took a whole month off. I was able to do this because of your support. I knew Luca was starting school in the September. I wanted to spend time with him in August. I knew it was always gonna be a quiet month. So I told myself I was gonna take a whole month off. And I don't just mean like, I'm not gonna post. Like I switched off completely, turned off emails, turned off like everything and had a month away from this business. I went on holiday and it was just amazing. And it made me realize, that, like I felt it recharged me. I was like a new person in September. So many people messaged me and was like, you've got this new lease of life. My goal is to have August off every year if I can. It was just incredible. And then the final thing, which was not in the goals for last year. And I say it's a highlight because looking back now it is, and at the time it really wasn't, is I left my dream studio this year. So in the last video, I definitely was thinking 
this is going to come to an end here in the studio. Like I just felt like in the past, I was like, well, I'm going to grow. I'm going to keep growing and we're going to go to a bigger place and maybe I can get two rooms. And like, that's how I felt. But when I filmed this last video, I was starting to feel like, oh, this is going to end soon. The rent was going up and Patreon was going down and I was just... I could have easily just carried on and pretended everything was fine, but that wouldn't have been fair to you. It wouldn't have been fair to me either. I made the decision in May time, April, May, to leave. And I had to do my three months notice, which I did. And it all coincided with me taking August off. So I left the studio and then I had a month off. I'm really, I'm still really sad about it. There's days I wake up and I'm really sad about it. I loved that space. And what I've realised is that Emily Harvey Art, it thrived in that space, but it didn't need the space. Um, and it was a highlight. I wouldn't be able to, like taking Luca to school and picking him up and being there and this is better. It is so much better. But it's really sad that watching that goals video in that space, I love that space. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I've had a great year. I had some really amazing things happen this year. And um, I just want to thank you all for sticking with me while I've moved back home. So now we need to set some goals for next year. So let's do that, shall we? <laughs> So I have a few goals for 2024. I feel like a lot of them are the same as last year, but I feel like I've learned so much in this past year that I feel like I can achieve them this time. Does that make sense? So the first one is Kickstarter. We're gonna do another one. I know last year, I like this year, I wanted to do two and my cushion one didn't work out. I'm gonna do one Kickstarter this year. It's gonna be in February because I feel like February is a lucky month for me with the last one doing so well. I am ready to go with this Kickstarter. I'm so organized with it and I will be sharing, depending on when this video goes up, this video might go up on New Year's Day, which means I will have shared it on Instagram today, but I will share it with you now. I really, 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 really want to do a plaque, a hanging plaque, similar to like what I have here on my desk. Um, and it's just this idea of having something in your workspace that we all have and can look at and um, it connects us all, similar to what the cushion was gonna do. However, a plaque is easier for me to store here. Um, it's, I originally I wanted it to be big, but sadly that's not gonna be possible. So it's gonna be a little plaque like that held up with a chain that you can display in your workspace or wherever. And um, my patrons helped me design it and it's really beautiful. Like I always want to kind of push what's possible and try things I haven't seen before. I haven't seen anyone kind of do this before. I'm really excited about it. it. To me, it feels like what a Kickstarter should be. This is a project I definitely couldn't fund on my own. And I don't know if it's like, I don't know how it's gonna go. Um, sometimes with like pin, pin Kickstarters, I know they'll go okay, you know? This one, some people will be like, I don't want that. So it's it's a hard one, but it's um so it's gonna be the plaque, and then I have pins that I have designed. I have seven pins I've designed, which will be stretch goals, depending on if the plaque gets funded. Um and again, my patrons have seen all of that. It is small business related, um, but I know a lot of you have small businesses and you will love these. Even if you don't have a small business, like the plaque for sure will be something you could put up in your home. Um, so that is my first goal, is to do a Kickstarter in February for it to be, you know me, like I like them to be big and I just love the, it feels like a performance. I know that sounds really weird, but like I love doing freebies. I love doing add-ons. I love doing like the more people that join, like the more freebies you get. Like I just love the community aspect of it. And it's going to be a big one. Like, I hope this, I hope this is, a, I hope it goes amazingly well because Kickstarters, it gives me products for the whole year. That The mini pin Kickstarter I did at the start of the year, I still have those on the shelf and I'm so grateful for them. So that is my first one, Kickstarter. <laughs> the next one is 
extremely exciting. Um, I say it's a goal, but it's happening. I just hope it goes very, very well. But we have our first Patreon event, meetup, in-person event this year. And um, it's coming soon, like very, very, very soon. And um, this is my first time hosting an event and speaking at an event and doing all the things. And I'm very excited about it. It's not something I'll do every year because it's a lot of, <laughs> it's a lot of work. But to celebrate our fifth year on Patreon, I'm so excited for this event and to everyone that's coming. We have people traveling from America to come to this event. Like it feels really, really special. And um, I'm really, really, really excited. So I'm hoping by the time you watch this, Emily, at the end of the year, you can show pictures of the event and how amazing it went and just the joy of the event. The next one I've put is events, but it's the same as last year. I just want to do some more events. So we're going to do, I'm already doing Stationery Fest. I'm signed up for that again. And Magical Market is happening again. I haven't been accepted, but I'm, sh I'm hoping I get that one again. Um, I've obviously got my own event and I am going to apply for more events. And I really, really hope I get approved this year. I just need to work my butt off and make sure. I just need to get myself in the room, get myself in the room and I'll be fine. That's how it was with Magical Market. I was turned down and then I was given the okay and that's it then. It's become my favourite thing. So I've just put events. So we'll see at the end of the year what that means. I just hope I'm busy with lots of things happening. Next one, I would like to have August off again. Fingers crossed. I absolutely loved it, like I said before. I have a holiday booked in August and I just need that time to recharge. And I, I just think it's a great goal to have. Like having time off is a goal. Like find yourself a business that brings you so much joy but you also know you need time away from it to make it better you know um so yeah august hopefully i can again show you pictures of my holiday in august and my time away from social media um i need it next one wholesale slash shops so the pop-up shop thing did not work out however i have been applying for sh to be in shops for the past few weeks <sighs> not pop-up shops these are actual shops and my goal this year is to send out like send out products to some of my favorite shops to see if i can be stocked in them get back on fair on my wholesale and get back into that and really build up like that income stream of being in shops because in months like August, for example, where I am away from social media, things like that can still thrive. So I'm really going to spend time this year, like building that up. And I just know like, I've got so many lovely products and it all looks really nice together. I could send out like a box of like a sample of goodies to a shop and say like, I would love to be stocked with you. And I could send like 20 of those out and like three of them could come back and say, yes, you know, so if you know of any shops that you think I like would do well in, please let me know. And um, let's see if that happens in 2024, fingers crossed. So a couple of numbers. I'm, I've set myself the same goal as last year of 150 sales because I didn't quite reach it last year. I had 130. So I wanna hit 150, but like smash it. <laughs> um, that is my goal for this year, 150 sales a month overall everything that I do. And I'm also setting the goal again of 400 patrons. I can do this, I can. There's thousands and thousands and millions of people out there that want to do their own business but don't know where to start. And I have so much, so much footage and content and video library that can help them in all aspects. They don't need to spend thousands and thousands on courses. Like I have guest speakers that have come on to talk about how to do your emails, how to set up Pinterest, how to, like, we've done it all. And I need to promote it better, make sure people can find it, and also encourage patrons that have seen value in it, come up with a way to, so that they can help promote it. Like, I really wish Patreon did, like, an affiliate thing or a way for my current patrons to promote it and then they get rewarded for helping me get new patrons. Um, but we're gonna grow next year. If I don't hit 400, I want to be growing. I want it to be better than it was last year. 
<sighs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> the next one is YouTube growth. So I took some time off YouTube. Ah, I have a love hate thing with YouTube. I love documenting things here. I love it. But I think when I left the studio and moved back home, I really struggled to film content because I just felt rubbish in here. I just felt like, why would you want to watch this? Why would you want to watch somebody who works their way up to the dream studio to then come back into here? Like, why would you want to watch that? That's what I told myself. So I stopped filming. Um, but I've realised that I want to go back to how it used to be. I want to go back to the cosy, relatable vlogs of somebody who is just trying to figure it out because that's what I'm doing. And um, vlogs are coming back. Vlogs are coming back. I'm not going to put myself down when the numbers are low because my numbers are low on studio vlogs compared to my peers. Um, that doesn't matter. Instead of worrying that no, like the numbers aren't high enough. I need to just make videos for the people that are watching. The people that tune into every single video. I want to make content for you. So, uh, yeah, vlogs are coming back. I think I'm wondering if I need to try filming less often. I think I put a lot of pressure on myself to make a video every single week where I could like film a vlog every month, but it just be packed. I think, I mean, I prefer to watch longer vlogs that are crammed full. Um, maybe that takes the pressure off then. But I also want to do more videos that are helping you. I used to do these all the time with tips and little tricks and I stopped and that's coming back in 2024. So YouTube, by the end of, by the, end of the year, YouTube will have grown this year and uh, it will be more consistent. I will enjoy making the content and it'll be fab. I'm, I'm putting it out into the universe. It will be fab. And then the final goal, which I didn't think was going to be a goal because I told myself I wasn't going to do this, but I would really like to work with some brands in 2024. Now, I have no desires to be an influencer. I've got no desires to sell you products that I wouldn't buy. It's just not something I'm interested in. I've been offered the skill shares, I've been offered the uh, laser laser printers, all the all the things I've been offered, and I turn them down because I wouldn't I don't use them. I wouldn't pay for them and I don't I really struggle to come on here authentically um to promote a product I wouldn't use and that's not to go against anybody who like some of my friends I just have great side incomes from these brand things but I just really struggle with it and of all the things I have done I've worked with some great brands um BenQ I have my monitor from BenQ which is just amazing um Huey on I've worked with Cricut I've worked with um Windsor and Newton I've worked with all these brands I'm so Munbine <laughs> I've worked with I've worked with some incredible brands but I'll tell you now I have never been paid for anything that I've done I've only just accepted things for free and most of the time I ask for an extra one to give away so I've given away crickets I've given away Hueyons I've given away label printers um because I feel I don't know I really struggle with the whole brand side of it I think the big thing is I do get a lot of brand things come through but it's all for stuff that's just not relevant like just doesn't fit and I just turned down all of it. So this year I want to kind of lead the brand work and I would like to reach out to some of my favourite brands and ask like, can I make content for you? Can I work with you in some way? And I would love to curate who I work with. And um, again, that could be a really great side income for me. And to, to get strong in like, figuring out what my worth is with that. I always struggle with how much do you charge? And a lot of people message me and say, Emily, how much, how much would you charge? And I'm like, I don't know, I've never been paid. Um, figuring out what I'm worth, not just accepting a freebie. Freebies are wonderful, like they are great. But if a brand wants you to create content for them, it's because you can, you, they know you're valuable. Yeah, I wanna figure that out in 2024. I don't really know what that means, but 
it would be great if I could have worked with some brands and felt kind of in charge of that and I'll tell you all about it again on the studio vlogs and talk you through it and like what my plans are with that so yeah so there we go that is my 2023 review and my goals for 2024 thank you so much for watching this video i really hope you've enjoyed it i will be back in january for studio vlogs studio vlogs are back because our kickstarter launches on the 1st of february i need to tell you everything that's happening show you all the behind the scenes and i'll take you along on my planning of my patreon meetup and all of the stuff that's going into that list so much stuff coming in 2024 i will take you along for all of it so thank you for being here thank you so much for your support and i will see you really really soon bye guys